Welcome to Staying Relevant, the podcast with two bestest of best chums, blood brothers, uh, twins, some might say. No one says that. It, they do, actually. No one says we're twins. That's that's what a twin would say. That's very twinny, actually. That's kind of what a twin would say. Okay. I will be swearing, uh, if you don't like the... Um, oh, and actually, quite importantly, um, Pete's beanie is matching my trousers. You're right. That is uh, <laughs> very important. <laughs> Pete's beanie's matching my trousers. And the cravat a little bit as well. Um, this is obviously Monday's episode, which means you'll be able to watch that on Friday on YouTube. And then Thursday, we'll have a bonus episode, which you'll be able to watch on Sunday, which makes it Monday, Thursday, Thursday Friday, Friday, and Sunday. Sunday. I feel like the novelty's worn off a bit, but I'm going to persevere with doing that. Um, make sure you rate review do all that sort of crap because Sam loves reading it but I do I love it I actually do it every morning he does do it every morning and actually what I've realised is that there's a there's a bit of a form to this it takes about two days for the new reviews to come in so uh, I, I always check and it's always like Tuesdays when it's Friday so yeah, yeah, if you wouldn't mind just just piling them in, that'd be great. Yeah, you are sad um, every morning, every uh, morning. And if I get a bad one, Zara will turn around and be like, "If you just tell about you don't get any bad ones anymore, you're king of the jungle." Um, also, make sure you follow us on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Snappy C. Which I think that's about it. Should yeah. we fucking crack on? Let's get our crack on because we've got so much to talk about. We literally have. We have sold out every single ticket of the tour, which is terrifying, but also very exciting. The nerves be jangling. I didn't sleep last night very well, actually. That's something I was going to talk to you about, Pete. Uh, we don't need to. No, I think we do. No, this is a podcast. I had a nightmare that I was naked on stage. Yeah. Yeah. Is... That's, that, I feel like that means something as well. Yeah. Going back a few months, I was naked on stage. Uh, you were, actually. And yeah. um, it was fine. Yeah, but see, I don't know if it's going to be fine for me. I, I, so I woke up in cold sweats. Genuinely, I thought, like, I, I I, just, like, I walked on stage, we did our bit, and I looked down, and I was naked. Mm. And that freaked me out, because I feel like that means something. Like, I feel like it's a premonition for something going wrong. I, if, if we're going to take this into sort of therapy mode, I think that's because you feel vulnerable, because it's not something you've done before. I do actually, feel vulnerable. Being naked makes you, it kind of gives you the feeling of being vulnerable. So, actually, I think you're probably feeling like, this is brand new, we've not done this before. Yeah. You're nervous because you're going to feel like you're really exposed. I do feel exposed I feel really exposed I feel great like I want to get in there get up and in there but like there's also a part of me that's going fuck I'm nervous yeah see uh, weird enough I'm the opposite I'm, I just want to get it done I can't wait to crowd surf I can't wait I was talking to Zara <laughs> about this recently it's going to be so epic it's going to be so epic. I'm going to come out as well. I just so want to point out, if you are coming to the show, I will make sure that he isn't naked when he crowd surf. That will be terrible. Um, anyway, so uh, opening conversation was therapy. Great. Um, what have you been up to? Not sleeping and dreaming about being naked on stage. Wonderful. No, Let's terrifying. move straight on. Yeah. All right, because this is a big, long one. Opening conversation was great. You know, we've all had a great week. Great. This week, we did our first sort of semi-run through of the tour. We hired a theatre to do this with seven audience members. <laughs> All of whom know us and are <laughs> entirely sick of us. None of whom laughed. <laughs> so the one person who doesn't know us that well, who is uh, the wonderful Paul um, at Phil McIntyre, who is uh, organising the tour and whatever, um, he was our one shining light in an otherwise very dim and deathly silent <laughs> theatre. But he only he only stayed for half of it. So the second half of the show, I'll be honest with you, was a struggle. There wasn't much reaction. Sam? I actually thought it was fucking great. I'm going to be honest with you. I was really nervous when I went onto the stage. But we got given these mics, right? And they basically <laughs> attached your head and then come round your mouth like Britney Spears. Do you remember it's, she goes, it's oh, baby, Britney. baby. Um, it was sick, man. It was so cool. We came out on stage. And uh, can I just stop on the, on, on the mics there? Because um, uh, Charlotte had a bet. Um, so Chaz had a bet with um, uh, Saffron, I believe, on um, the fact that as soon as we put the mics on, we would both sing. Um, so as soon as we put the mics on, yeah. 
And um, as soon as they'd been switched on, we could hear our voices. We both sang. Yeah, Pete went for a country number and I, I went Britney. Yeah, Sam went Britney and I, I did go country. Um, so cool, though. Really like a nice tight fit around the ears and then straight into the mouth. It was really, really nice. I enjoyed every second. Sorry, of it. if you've just missed the first part of that, Sam's talking about a microphone. You feel like you're on stage just giving it some welly. Yeah, and I'll tell you why that is. It's because we were on stage giving it some welly. <laughs> yeah, we were. I imagine, yeah, you didn't just feel like. How much welly did you give? Not much, I'll be honest with you, because I spent the majority of it just trying to get through it, being quite angry. Pete got um, really angry So <laughs> as you half can, of it. As you can imagine, I um, I seem to have um, uh, become sort of obsessed with the tour um, and being in control. Um, so uh, obviously Sam has known about what the plan was for the tour, but this was kind of the the, the run through of the tour. Yeah. Um, uh, and it was sick. And it was, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was difficult. Yeah, there was a, a real feeling of, um, I felt like I was a drama teacher teaching sort of uh, GCSE drama to a bunch of students who didn't want to be there. So um, it was a struggle, but we got through it. Um, we didn't more than get through it, we aced it. The whole team were there. Videographer Ted came along as well. Um, obviously Paul from Phil McIntyre, our entire team were there. Managers were there. Um, yeah, it was a big day. Agents, it was a long yeah, day. Agents didn't laugh. No, 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 they did. They actually left. 15 minutes I in. Did actually, that's now, I had to get the last train. They said, yeah, because the last train was more important than the sellout tour that we're doing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was makeup chairs. We had little, you know, dressing rooms and all sorts of stuff. We filmed some wonderful little bits, haven't we, Samuel? Uh, we have indeed, actually. A real insight into our own preps for the tour. Well, so Pete is a really specific guy. If you get Pete into the makeup chair, like there's a lot going on. He needs a lot of things. He has something called under eye rollers. Yeah. I didn't even know what they were. I only bought one set, though, and um, Sam used them. He had under-eye rollers, and, yeah. and, and and they were really nice, actually. They're really moisturising. Quite liked them. Um, Pete then, at one point, I, I just... told his hairdresser to inspect the bald patch on my head. Never met her before, right? And Pete just goes, hey, why don't you have a quick... Why don't you have a, just have a quick look at Sam's head and see if there's anything you can do? And, and let me tell you why I did that is because we, you know, we've been, rude. we've been quite open about it, but Sam has a sunroof. Um, Not yet. And she said, I've got something for that. And I thought, well, wonderful. I could, I could save him a trip to Turkey. So embarrassing. So she put what's called hair fibres in the back of his head, which you sprinkle on. And it really made, it, it was a really good job. She it, poured. It was like you were 18 She again. poured dust on my scalp. And just rubbed it in a little bit. And it was, a, it was quite a good colour match as well. To the point where one of, of our average producers. mousy brown. One of our producers then looked at my head and went, God, that looks so much better. Um, so we've got Chaz as always, um, cause sort of Chaz has developed herself from a producer into just sort of the narrator of our lives, um, and just follows us around making notes. You always feel like she's busy working, but what she's doing is just writing stuff to fucking rip the shit out of yeah. us for. So we'll start with this one, shall we? The day started with Pete spending time in the makeup chair as it was the dress rehearsal. Um, makeup chair Pete was unlike any other Pete producer Char Charlotte had seen before. He was magnetic. Thank you. Uh, he was charming the makeup team, cracking jokes, taking selfies in the mirror. He was vibrant. Thank you ever so much. When producer Charlotte commented on this, Pete said, it's like being back home. That is a really terrible line. Uh, and it reminded me of my modelling days. Did you say that? Yeah. Because she said, I've never seen you like this. And I said, well, I, I have spent a bit of time in like fucking chairs like this. And I find it so relaxing and nice. Um, and back in the day, like back in the day. You were never a model. Before I even did TV, yeah. Used to do things for All Saints and fucking, yeah. Wow. It was back in the skinhead days when I was. Uh, How would you look down the camera? Like, what was your go-to? It's the same one I have now, miserable. Oh, really? Yeah, it's not changed. It just looks worse now because at least then I was borderline attractive. Yeah. Now I just... I, I, I look in pain. Mm. Well, you and did look a bit in you, pain, actually. Internally, I am in pain. And that took a very dark turn. <laughs> um, we did get introduced, though, to tour manager Luke. Yes. Now, tour manager Luke's really important to us because he's getting us from A to B to C. And he's basically in charge of everywhere we're going to turn up, when we're going to turn up there. We have a tour manager. I've never had one in my... We're basically rappers. 
We're yeah. basically Drake, for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're not like rappers. We couldn't wrap a Christmas present. But, um, yeah, tour manager Luke, who I've nicknamed, I haven't told him his new nickname yet, but he is called um, Beardy. Um, because he has a fabulous, fabulous beard. He does I mean, have a good beard. it is voluminous. It is wonderful. There is more hair on his chin than there is on both of our heads put together. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, Luke is going to be uh, handling all of that sort of stuff. So he asked us some very good questions that we like. I mean, firstly, Sam loved him because he bought you pepper armies, raw mushrooms, McCoy's crisps. Well, but apparently, sweets. we have things called a rider. So a rider is things that you get given when you turn up to these venues, right? And so, do you know what? Out of the two of us. You would maybe think that I'm the one who expects stuff, but Pete is very specific about the things he wants. The guy was like, so where do you guys kind of want to stay? Like, what kind of hotels are you talking about? Pete went, only high end, mate. No. He went, <laughs> he went far star and above. And I was no. sitting there going, mate, I'll take a premier in. I don't care. Pete was just like, no, Hilton or above. Right, I'm going to tell you why this is. It's because the only safe zone that I'm going to have... Safe zone? ...and sanctuary I'm going to have on this tour away from these people and that is going to be in my hotel room. That being me, right? by the way. Because I'm going to have to travel with him on a tour bus for hours every day, <laughs> then do a show with him, rehearse with him. I need somewhere safe, calm and pleasant to be. <laughs> That's the main reason. I've slept in doorways. Yeah, I am has. not I'm not a fancy person, <laughs> but I feel like I am gonna need safe zone. Do you know what I actually do on that safe zone bollocks? Do you know what he said to Luke? He goes, he goes, Luke goes, so um basically, how are we gonna get sort of like from place to place? Because you know, one of the times we're going from sort of like Glasgow to Plymouth, right? Pete at one point went, no, no. no. Can we go and get two separate oh, cars? Well, this is why. I, I mean, obviously, got the tour bus for Sam because I thought Sam would love this. Um, and I thought it was something, you know, if, if we could do it, Sam would, would, would love the tour bus. But I didn't think that through because I thought that was just a really nice thing to, to, to kind of, for us to have a tour bus. But then I thought about it and thought, fuck, it means I'm going to have to travel with him. Um, and I like to sit in the back of the car with headphones on and listen to country music and sort of doze off a little bit because it's the only time I sleep properly. Uh, but you cannot do that when you have a Sam Thompson. Why not? Um, I'll let you sleep. You, you won't. And also, it's dangerous. I'd, I've never slept around Sam. Um, because Actually, you have once. I took a photo of you. Yes, because he does things like that, or you wake up and, and Zara is there taking a picture of Sam's bollocks resting on my forehead, or, you know, he's always had this weird fascination with shaving my eyebrows off, yeah. and it's always made me very uncomfortable, because I feel like if I'm ever weak or vulnerable, he may <laughs> attempt to do that. So, do you know what, Pete, do you remember when you fell asleep around my place? This is, this is last year, you fell asleep around my gaff, and I put a sign in his hands, and, and a wand next to him going, you're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> So I think you now understand <laughs> why I need a safe zone and why I potentially didn't want to travel in. But now obviously we're on the tour bus, so we are going to have to travel together. Yeah, we are. Uh, but we're it is on a, roads. It is a big tour bus. Um, so I have asked for a red rope to go across the middle of it. So that there is the VIP area and then the uh, front of the bus Sam area. So Sam's got his little crash at the front and then at the back is is the... the the kitchen bar area. I just can't wait to push Pete's buttons and him not be able to get off the bus. I can't wait. We're on the M25, hurtling down the M25, and I farted in his face, and there is nothing he can do about it. I cannot wait. And the bus driver's never... Actually, Pete's got a coach licence. Pete's going to be driving the bus at one point. It, I mean, you won't get this reference, but it, 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 I, I do feel like it might have like an Only Fools and Horses moment on the Jolly Boys outing where the um, uh, the bus driver gets drunk and then Denzel has to drive the bus. I, no, everyone's looking at me. Okay, I'll Pete, stop. Pete, tell him, tell him about your coach like It's really important. I, I, I've just got licences for weird things because I... I Pete's got a forklift licence. <laughs> I'm not even joking. He's got a forklift license. I, I Why? Just, because I like learning. He's got a scuba diving license. Uh, advanced master diver, actually. But yeah. He's an advanced master diver, a coach driving license and a fork driving license. Well, the thing is, obviously, I, I, I'm not, uh, you know, I... I um, I'm not a very educated person, and, and weirdly enough, I, I do like to learn new things and try and, like, you know. I'm so, are we going to be growing? Go, you know, those things we go, 
and you're like the when the wheel's like f- thirty feet big, you're literally like right, turn left. You've got a fucking like. Yeah, I mean the difference being that it's it's not um, hydraulics. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's not a bus from 1950. Um, I think I just can't more... wait to see you on the bus with the big steering wheel going. Sam, fuck off! I'm going round the roundabout. And he, <laughs> I just can't wait. I I cannot wait to see. I'm going to get you a hat. Actually, I'm going to get you a I'm bus not, driver's sorry. hat. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm yeah. not actually driving the bus. Yeah, but you will be for a bit. I'm not driving the bus. <laughs> No. We've got a bus driver who we've never met. I can't wait for him to be like, what the fuck is going on? When the sixth fast in a row goes in Pete's face and he's running up and down the 14 metre bus trying to stamp on my head. The bus driver, Steve, is going to be like, what the fuck is going on back there? It, yeah, it is a big old bus. But, but having said that, I actually, actually, I probably shouldn't have mentioned farting in Pete's face because I, I have a little prezi for you, right? Well, Pete did something for me, and I've done something for Pete. Um, Pete got me the bus because he knew that it would matter to me, and it really does. I feel like, I genuinely feel like Drake or like Harry Styles. I feel like we're, or Bieber, one of them. Oh, God. And, 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 so, and so I thought, <laughs> at quite a big expense to myself, <laughs> I thought I would do something for the bus. I'm going to leave it at that because I'm going to keep it as a surprise. The problem I have with surprises from Sam is that I they are generally awful. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. You are going to love it. Put it this way. It's so good that I've hired a videographer to come and see your reaction. Oh, that means I'm going to hate you. No, you're going to love it. No, no, no. Whenever, whenever Ted arrives, <laughs> I know something bad is happening. <laughs> I know you're getting genuinely... I, I literally, if I ever turn up anywhere and I see Ted, I literally think, oh, God. <laughs> oh, is there, a, is there a, a, a number two station? Well, I don't think it's called a number two station. I think it's just called a toilet. Yeah, but... Um, you, there's not sort of a station where you just go and leave you your have, shit on the side. If you needed to have a shit, could you have a... No. Wow. Interesting. Why not? Oh, Chaz, unfortunately, you are on a boys' tour bus. Mm. You're going to, and, and I'll be honest with you, luckily for you, I don't like bodily functions, so I won't shit around you, and that's okay. I will. He will. Yeah. I honestly, one of my favourite moments. I'll be honest with you, Chaz, it, it wouldn't surprise me if he shits with the door open so oh, he still talk to us. Oh, no, I will. I'll absolutely go to the bathroom with the door open, 100%, because I really, really like a sense of community. I genuinely do. I like to see dark. people when I'm talking to them. Yeah. So I always poo with the door open. Mm. Yeah, always. When me and Pete lived together, so when 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 me and Pete lived together I, in the circle for a week, I would I would I would put the door open, and uh, and then when Pete you would go to the bathroom, I'd, I'd be in the kitchen, right? Uh, sorry, I'd be in the kitchen, um, and then he'd go pee pee pee, and I'd literally just take two sips back and look down the corridor, which is where the toilet was. So if the kitchen's here, and that's where the toilet was, and this is what I'd see. Yeah. <laughs> and I go what? And he go, you right? Just Mate, you're having nice. a shit. Like, what, what are you doing? Um, and yeah, then when Pete weird. used to go to the loo, I used to ask him, because it's really fun just to be like, how are you doing? Well, I just yeah. don't feel like at uh, 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 my ripe old age, I, I need to discuss, uh, like, having a shit. So I just try and sneak off and just go and have a shit. But, and, but because I just don't like that sort of stuff. And, and then Sam would know that I've done that, <laughs> so would just come and then go, how are you getting on? There's no running Is away it good? from me. Um, anyway, so um, it's going to be really fun. This tour is not only going to be live show, just extravaganza, but it's also going to be a lot of fun on that bus. So also, you know, we spoke to Luke about, um, you tour know, manager some, Luke. Yeah. The beardy. Um, and, uh, we've discussed that myself and Ted, uh, had already spoken about this. Ted's videographer, Ted. I feel like everyone knows who Ted is now. Um, we're going to stay in it because Dublin is our last night on the tour. So Ted and I were going to stay an extra night in Dublin because I love Dublin and we were going to have a pub crawl the next day just to complete the tour. Um, we have invited Beardy, Luke, um, because he looks like he'll be fun. Um, so I feel like me, Ted and Beardy are going to have a night out. Sam heard about this and now wants to come. I'm in. But I don't think you will. I'm in. But I've already told Luke. I've already told him. I'll stay for Don't look at me in anger. If we're, if we're I'll ending be honest this with you, thing... It kind of, for me, if I'm honest with you, 
it was kind of like my break away at no, the end no, of the no, tour. We're going to go to a nightclub in not, Dublin. No, because it's a Wednesday. It's not Dublin is not about that. What we are doing is we're going on a pub crawl. Yeah, and then we're going to end up in a nightclub. And if I can't Drinking Guinness, if I can't do a crowd surf, oh in, my god, it, it, in in the actual auditorium, I'm going to sure as shit do one in I that nightclub. I don't know what the fuck your obsession with crowd surfing is recently. And especially, I've never done one, but especially after I've described mine, which was horrific, and I just got punched punched me in the dick, punched in the dick. You're like, God, I want to do that. Yeah. It makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to find a night out and go absolutely enormous. We're not going to... We're just... We're going, we're going to get sparklers. Roll. We're going to be those legends at the table with sparklers. We are not going to be legends with sparklers. Saffron, put your arms down, we are. young lady. We're going to have champagne coming in. You know they have champagne showers. No. See what I mean? This is why I didn't want him to come. Yeah. Because me, Ted, and, and Beardy Luke, we're just going to go to some pubs and have some Guinness yeah. and just reminisce about the oh, tour. Yeah. It's turned into champagne shows and crowd surfing because this fucking Wally is coming. Yeah, it's going to be great. Anyway, so anyway, the rehearsals, so the rehearsals began and it was kind of, it wasn't really like a proper run through of the show. It was just kind of going through the motions of it, working out the things that might work and might be funny. Um, so it was basically just Sam and I cracking gags and then shouting to um, our secretary PA admin, Charlotte, slash producer, who was taking minutes. So we basically, every time we said, so Charlotte, write that down. So she was just furiously tapping away in the corner like a woodpecker. Just da -da 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 -da, that's all we heard. Um, because, we, yeah, we, we tried out some different things, didn't we, Samuel? Well, all I really like about this is the fact that I've just been allowed to fly. I, I don't really have to do anything other than turn up, which is absolutely lovely. Well, let me tell you something. There was a part of the show that I said, Sam, I think you should lead this. And he went, oh, no. <laughs> and I went, I think you should do something for it though shouldn't you <laughs> and he went oh god really can't you just do this and I was like no well you... no it's because I just panic I don't like I like what if I get something wrong you know I, I just don't want it I, I'm just nervous Sam, we've built a podcast based on fucking everything up yeah, I don't think point. anyone is expecting this to be a flawless performance <laughs> <laughs> and if are we going to bow at the end and if you what are we going to bow at the end we are absolutely not bowing you know they hold hands and bow at the end of productions I feel like we should hold hands and bow Sam this is a podcast tour yeah but we're still this, this is not Broadway. Yeah, I mean, give it. I feel like, and then and then they go, encore! And you're like, okay, come on. Then we come out again and go, hold hands and go, and bow. No, we literally did. Uh, this is the thing. So at the end, the Sam's biggest contribution in terms of the structure of the um, tour and the show is the ending. And it is by far the best bit. My least favourite part bit. of the show. It's the best bit. Um, because I know full well it's going to be me that is going to be on the receiving end of the disaster that is the end. And that's could all be I can disaster. say at this point. <laughs> no, 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 it's not could be. It's going to be a disaster. Put it but it's way. Sam's favourite moment. Bring your lighters. And that's all I'll say. But yeah, the ending is gonna is is gonna be a lot. And then Sam at the end of, of the rehearsal was like, "So how are we gonna leave the stage?" So I was like, "Well, ta-da!" And then I'm gonna walk off. No, not on my watch. But I don't know. I'm not bowing. We're gonna do a bow. We're not doing a bow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. Re a really theatrical run on. And I and then and then, and then I'm gonna like go. Then we're gonna move to the light guy and go light guy. I am absolutely... Yeah. And then I'm we hold be, hands again and bow. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I am absolutely walking off and saying ta And I will leave Sam to thank everyone. I will. I'll be on stage thanking every single person. At that point, I will have done near on two hours worth of fucking... Two hours worth of fucking show. And at that point, I will need to leave. Um, so I will not be doing I that. I didn't want to do an intermission. I wanted to run straight through. I mean, at least Sam's calling it an intermission. It was half-time uh, uh, yeah, at the rehearsal. Half -time. Um, he, still <laughs> he still hasn't mastered interval, but um, we're getting closer to it from <laughs> half-time to intermission. Interval is what we're talking about. Uh, yeah, yeah, Sam just wanted to run all the way through. Um, um, just, just solid. Um, but I did say to him that at that point, I will need to go for um, uh, three or four cigarettes back-to-back -back and um, a private drink because then I can really gulp it down. <laughs> Whereas in public, I have to sort of sip. Do you know what I love is because we've got these really, really um, good mics, anything you utter under your breath, <laughs> you literally, you get caught out yeah. on everything. Because that is dangerous for me. Honestly, quite dangerous for me, because even during this bit, you know, we were just talking between two of us and forgetting that it was just broadcasting to the seven uh, members of the audience. And 
on the night, I do feel like it's going to be trouble. So if you are watching the show and you see me do that, I've not got a bad tooth. It's I'm just trying to cover the mic. Yeah, that's the problem. He 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 had quite a few goes at me in this one. Follow the script, Sam. So if it goes wrong, blame Pete. I'm going to be honest with you though. Although we've spoken about the tour, and obviously everyone knows that I I I, I have I weirdly got this. Uh, unusual vision and obsession in my head about it that I've tried to explain to people. This is the first time that we kind of roughly saw what it was and it felt quite vulnerable. It felt good. It felt vulnerable, but it felt really good. I felt lovely. I mean, I I I felt quite vulnerable um, based on the fact that I just wanted everyone to enjoy it and like it and actually, you know, think it was funny when you actually hear it or think it was a good show. Um, and so I did do a Sam after the rehearsal. He needed a bit of fluffing, he called me. No, he called me in the cab. Not even not even you, mate. Whilst we were still there, I I did go around to to, to everyone and go, what did you think? <laughs> um uh including Paul from from Phil McIntyre, um, who I, I did say to him, Am I still a genius? <laughs> um I did hear that one. Yes. And he responded, Yes, because everyone fucking loved it. Um, so yeah, I mean, you were a lot more confident because we spoke after, and you said to me, "Now that I've seen it, I feel, I feel yeah. more confident." It's yeah. gonna be, it's gonna be so sick. I'm so excited, and we're just gonna absolutely just live it up every second of it. Um, this is obviously a bit of a tour special, really, this episode because, and although we know some of you are not coming, um, what we have tried to do with the tour is, as we've mentioned, we have taken Ted who um, is coming on the entire tour, um, um, which he's over the moon about for two reasons. Um, firstly, because, you know, he's excited about being on tour, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, and secondly, because we're paying him a lot of money. Yeah. He's really gone in hard. So we're not actually making any money on this tour. No. Which, which I think is quite great. Funnily enough, by the time the the bus and everything else, we it's costing us to... We're in this. a deficit. Please bring your piggy banks because we have got merch. Do you know what we are doing, which is sick, and this is, I think, quite important to talk about, we're doing marketing. We're doing PR for the tour. We're doing it this morning. Oh, God, yeah. We We're are. doing this morning for the tour. It is bring your Pete to work day for Sam. Yeah. Um, I will be going along with Sam to his uh, other job on this morning. Well, I say other job. Da, to da, his apprenticeship da, 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 on oh. this morning. <laughs> How's it go again? I mean, you work on it. Yeah, yeah, that's this morning. That's the theme tune. You work from home. <laughs> oh, great. I'm going to repeat it. Yeah. Anyone else? That's the end bit. Yeah. Really jokes. Yeah. Love a bit of this morning. God, no, that was hilarious. <laughs> So Pete's coming to work. So We're going to sit on the sofa. So a couple of questions then on this, because uh, you've done another This Morning segment this week. I have. Um, uh, and, and obviously, you know, you're doing some really serious key pieces for This Morning. Uh, Why are they, you laughing, Pete? They, they, well, I'm just saying they seem to use you for all the the kind of, you know, really up to date, like the, the, the key bits that everyone needs to know. So this week you were, you, you were Dosh Man. <laughs> I was. Dosh man. But I basically turned up. I had no idea. It's called Dosh on your doorstep. Really cool thing to do, though, because Alison Hammond's done it. Joseph Gibson's done it. And now I did it as well. So you're joining in quite a good alumni. Did they dress up? No. See, this is where it gets a bit weird, because I dressed up, and I thought I was just turning up in whatever I was wearing. And, um, and he pulled out, the producer pulled out this, this superhero outfit, and it said, Dosh man, on the front. And he went, you're going to have to pull your top of top to, like, pieces, and then Dosh man comes out. Like Clark Kent. Like Clark, Clark Kent, Superman. that's exactly what it was like. But less Superman, more Superman. Yeah, Clark. and then they went, do a roly-poly. <laughs> have you done any segments on This Morning where they haven't dressed you up? We've had leotards, we've had jockey hats, we've had dosh man. Oh my God, I don't actually think I have. Yeah. Uh, do you think at any point... Am I the joke? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think at any... Yeah, you know like every village has an idiot. In the This Morning village... <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be the idiot. And I want to break it to gently, which is why... Should I'm we like, ask them when we sit on the sofa? <laughs> I, 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 it is what I'm going to ask. Um, Did you watch Dosh Man? No, I've never seen it um, because I'm normally doing things. Well, I ran through this big thing. I went... Tsh! 
and ran through and went, Dosh, man. God, I, that's, is it on YouTube? Because I would love to see that. I find daytime TV just really awkward anyway. Yeah, because 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 you can't just be yourself. You have to become a bit of a character, don't you? Where yeah. it's like, yeah, you know, and the little jokes. And, like you, about, oh, and you start putting your hand, your hand it, in the thing. Yeah. yeah, like even the way you're moving. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it made me feel a little bit like we should go on a break. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very Pete's daytime. Ick. I, I, I'll be honest with you. Like, Pete Ix has the ick from Sam Thompson on daytime TV. Do you have the I second think, bit where, I, where I'm in the I, think, uh, I can the only watch you from, from sort of Watershed onwards at Mate. this point. Because pre-Watershed, you are not a person I want to be around. Well, wait until you see me but, in the outfit. <laughs> but you are very daytime and very good and you're really getting the hang of that. I shout a bit too much though, don't I? The reason that I, I'm listening, the reason I'm on my phone is because, so we've just heard a headline from Chaz about Sam Thompson uh, plunging this morning into chaos, <laughs> which when you read it isn't as bad. The headlines. It doesn't sound tough. great. And then Liv Atwood actually sent me this morning. Um, oh no. So this morning, not the show this morning, she just sent me something this morning, um, which uh, was some coverage, and I'm, I'm not entirely sure what they are because she's not sent me the links, but just the the titles of him, the, them. And, and one of them is Sam Thompson Urged Penis Enlargement. And I'm not entirely sure what it's about because I can't find the link. <laughs> Sorry, what the hell? And she sent me laughing faces. And I don't entirely know what that is. What's but the... if you are also in the press this week for some sort of penis enlargement as well as plundering this morning. What the hell's going is on? Is there something? It's from the Live episode. Oh, it's from the Live episode. Oh. So, they're, so, so the two headlines for Sam this week, King of the Jungle, which may be the quickest downfall from any winner of the jungle, has plunged a daytime TV show into chaos <laughs> and has also revealed... <laughs> penis enlargement problems. And we've already just started, baby. Come on, I'm going to tear it all down. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I will keep trying until I'm good at it. I've seen the outfit. And oh, I'll you've seen you, it? Oh, yeah, I've seen the outfit. And oh. I'll tell you why I've seen the outfit. So let's not bother with all that fucking shit. Um, I've seen the outfit. I put it on my story. No, not because I saw it on your story. It's because I was repeatedly sent it by um, staying relevant listeners. Because um, they loved it. No. They were just confused uh, to your crotch area. Why? Well, because I presume you put it on over a suit. I did, yeah. Yeah, and the problem with that is that there was no penis, but it looked like you had saggy balls because your trousers had ridden up either side. Oh, no. So it, the, the, the fit on it is, is very much long uh, descending testicles. <laughs> Minus penis. So all in all, Dosh, your doorstep was a complete and utter success. Yeah, I imagine it went better for Alison Hammond <laughs> it's uh, during her reign as the Dosh I, woman. I spent about three hours watching old clips of Alison Hammond on her Dosh and the doorstep run. She made it look so seamless. No, listen, you're doing a very good job on this morning, otherwise you wouldn't keep going back. And obviously you, you are taking me to work to um, um, promote the tour. Um, not that we need to. Should we do like out. a Should we do like a dance into the studio? Or oh, something? absolutely not. But I feel like we're quite known for that. Well, weirdly enough, the only times that I've done this morning um, have been for quite serious things and and serious discussions. Oh my God, I don't know what we're gonna do. Um, I'm telling you now, Sam. Oh my God, I don't know what we're gonna do. Sam, 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 yeah. listen to me, um, because in all seriousness, That's a really good idea. I am not dancing into a studio and you are not going to make me do that because you I feel like you're at doing. home there. No. I know what I do. Because I will. I, I promise you now. Just remember, this is riskier for you oh, than yeah, it is for me. I just tell you what we're going to do. No. We're going to walk in in inflatable animal costumes. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. We're not. Yeah, we are. No, we're, and I'll tell you for two reasons why we're not. Firstly, because I'm not doing that. And secondly, because that's just copying Rob Beckett. Oh, shit. He's just done it, hasn't he? So, no, we're not doing that. So funny, uh, though, but to also, get Pete just keep walking in in his little animal costume. And, and weirdly enough, I do do a lot of things Sam's want me to, but Sam wants me to, but what he still hasn't realised is that I can say no to things. This isn't... Yeah, but sometimes I manage to get him. Just because you have to dress up every week does not mean I do. But I'm going to be honest, though, for anyone listening to this, and they're all four of you, right... You are going to want to tune in to this morning when we're doing the marketing, the PR for this, because we are going to go wild. So, yeah, that's our staying relevant moment for the week is, is the tour. And then we've also got this morning coming up. I also have a new show coming out. 
Pete Wicks is back on our screens with a bang. Unfortunately. Brand new show on E4 called The Underdog Josh Must Win, um, which is, you're, you're going to love it. But this is a related show with a difference because it's a show within a show. Right. So like the Truman Show. Yeah. Think of it that way. Yeah. Um, um, there are some things to look out for. Um, namely, I was going through a phase, styling-wise, where throughout the show you will see a range of different choices that in hindsight I could have done better. For example, there is a velvet suit with straightened black hair slicked back that is... <laughs> if you can hear the laughing in the background, that's the response I think I will get from a lot of people. Um, at, at one point I've also got curtains... <laughs> Um, I've also had my hair curled in, 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 in one episode. There's a lot of weird shit going on. Well, look out for but, that. But, but aside from looking out from that, yeah, it's myself, uh, Nick Grimshaw, Vicky Patterson and Amber Gill. But anyway, try and watch the show if you can, yeah, okay. uh, because I, I was supposed to try and promo it, but that's not gone well at all. Um, but try and watch the show because it is actually really good. It's a great show and our Peter Wicks is back on your screens with a bang. 9pm, E4. Yes, thank you, Sam. Be there. Thank you. Thank or you. Or be Ever square. So Good. Do that. That's it then. We're done. What a lovely episode. I feel like there's been quite a lot to talk about. We have got loads to talk about at the minute. We're on a roll. Thank you so much for listening to Staying Relevant. We hope that your day has improved markedly after listening to this, whether it be your, your tube journey to work, whether it be your run. A lot of people on runs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. whether it be on your run. And I apologise uh, to all the people who listen to this while dropping the kids off for the foul And that's language. not a poo. And if you are running, remember. I'll be honest with you. That sounds weird. No, no, no. That's how you, that's how you breathe when you run. So if you're running right now, this is going to be quite cool. If you're running right now. I've never heard anyone breathe like that whilst running. Uh, I don't. Is, is that a tried and tested technique? Oh, that's what I do. Is it? Uh, yeah. Although, actually saying that, I don't think you should take any sort of fitness advice from Sam because Sam actually called me at the weekend just to finally to finish this off. Um, and uh, I, I was supposed to see him on Sunday. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just need to finish this one off because I don't know how we've not spoken about it, but this has just reminded me. So I was supposed to see Sam on Sunday. Um, we were going to go for a beer together, which we don't do very often. We, we spend so much time together working, but we were sociably going to see each other for a little beer. We were going to go for a pint of Guinness for St Paddy's Day. So I messaged him about 11 o'clock in the morning and said, still on for later, mate. 15 minutes later, I got a reply saying, I'm in A&E. I then resp I replied to this and said, mate, is everything okay? He went, yeah, cracked my skull open. I then went, oh my God, what's happened? He then called me because he didn't reply to that. Um, and I thought something serious had happened. Um, Sam, went the <laughs> Sam went to the gym and stood up too quick and bashed his head on some of the equipment. Yeah. And then took himself to A&E and yeah. sat there for three hours because he thought he may be concussed. Well, actually, what happened was I, there was a, there was a, we were in the gym and there was a really, really, not that I would, I've got a girlfriend who I love. There's quite a good looking girl next to me doing in the squat rack. And I was with a personal trainer and I stood up too quickly, smacked my head on the, on the thing. And then just to look cool, because everyone turned around and went, oh, like that. And I went, it's fine. Didn't even hurt. I went, I can't even feel it. And then I passed out. I panicked. You know, and like, you know, you get really hot flush. And I went, fucking hell, I think I'm going to die. And my legs were really, really wobbly. And I fell over onto the floor. And the gym marshal had to come over. The gym marshal came over and carried me out. So, <laughs> so if you are looking for fitness advice, not sure he's your man. I had to get carried out of the gym. Oh, is that the guy that won the jungle? Legs fucking splayed. <laughs> Going, no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Plus, but okay, so obviously when Sam says to me, uh, I've cracked my skull open at the, the gym, you imagine immediately when someone uses that terminology, it's serious. No, it was serious. It's actually still very painful. Hold on. Right oh, here we go. And this is the point. It's serious. Cracked my skull open. That means yeah. there's claret everywhere. My guy's going to need stitches. It's fucking serious. So when he does call me and I go, fuck, mate, like, is it bad? Like, obviously you've got fucking work and that. And he went, oh, yeah, no, no, it's quite bad. 
I saw him the next day. There's not a mark on him. No, there is actually. There's a red mark. There's a bruise. Baby boy bumped his head. No, I bruised myself really bad. He came in really bad headache. Actually, yeah, he bruises like a pe- pe- cracked my skull open. Yeah, but I thought was I had. the message I got. Yeah, but I thought I had at that point. I thought actually that I had a brain hemorrhage. Yeah, and a bleed on the brain. But it turns out I didn't because I had a CT scan. <laughs> he had a CT scan for a bump on the head. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I got on that- carried out of the gym. <laughs> Sorry. On that note, ta-da. <laughs> it's been a really fun week. We love you. Thank you. Oh, like, comment, subscribe, follow all the socials. It is funny, though, the way the crack, the crack's gone. I genuinely thought you'd done something bad. There, there's not. Any... It's so painful still. Yeah, because you bumped your head quite hard, but you haven't cracked I your skull. I bumped my head quite hard. I smashed it and to get carried out of the gym. Yeah, but that's because you're, you're pathetic. My PT saw you, by the way. In the, did he tell you? Oh, God, yeah, I saw him yeah. after. That was that morning. Cause it, that's it, the it guy. Came, he, oh, because he came up and said to me. He was there. And I just didn't assume that like he would train you because he's really in shape. Yeah. Like, and I just, he looked like he'd be quite good at his job. We were doing legs. Staying Relevant was an Insanity Studios production.